What's going on Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video. Today I want to talk to you guys about the offensive line and kind of just give you guys my thoughts and opinions going into the matchup tomorrow against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, today's Saturday so we are going to make this uh, pretty much a regular thing where I am breaking down film three four times a week uh, and today specifically every Saturday going forward I want to track the offensive line, man. I want to see the progress. I want to see where we're at at the beginning of the season towards the end. This past week, it wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys a ton of plays. I'll show you guys some bad plays. I'll show you guys some good plays. Uh, I really want to focus in on the run game specifically. And I want you guys to watch the right side here. Uh, Leatherwood, if you guys watch my Leatherwood film breakdown, this was a play that was highlighted. I kind of broke it down. He does a great job pushing number 50 out, and then he gets up to the next guy. But 72 does a pretty solid job as well. If you guys watch him and watch how he's able to do just enough to let Josh Jacobs get through this. And let me see if I can slow it down. Um, you guys can see, like, he does an okay job. The defensive lineman kind of has his head uh, to the inside here. But he does just enough. He turns him just enough for Josh Jacobs to squeeze through that lane. And the guy tr almost tackles him. But, you know, an arm tackle isn't going to bring Josh Jacobs down. Uh, so it's not a horrible block. And, you know, this whole entire week on Twitter, social media, uh, I heard over and over again how terrible of a job Andre James did but I want to shoot that narrative down now uh, you know before we get into that fully do understand he did make mistakes he made a you know some mental makes mistakes specifically he got beat a couple times as well but he also had pretty good blocks like this watch how John Simpson's going to take the guy on over Andre James and then Andre James can get up to Patrick Queen Patrick Queen's one of the best young linebackers but if you keep your eye on Andre James on this play Look at how he, he passes off um, that guy right there. Let me just see if I can back it up just a little bit. Um, as the play begins, the first thing I notice, he gets his hand just enough on him, just a little bit, for 76 to take him on. And then look at James get up to the next level. He gets to uh, Patrick Queen, um, and he does an okay job, right? I mean, the hands kind of land to the outside. You don't want to see that. that. That's a way for you to get a holding call. Uh, but even then, when, when Patrick Queen sheds this block, Arnold James does not stop his block he's gonna keep going he's gonna keep chasing he's gonna keep pushing because Andre understands that Josh Jacobs vision is top tier look at this he sticks with the block and Josh is gonna cut it back perfectly and Andre sticks with his block not the best block not the worst block pretty good block if you ask me uh, another block on this play and I'm, I'm trying to show you guys every single one of these blocks uh, because it you know every block has to hit for a play to be successful and i'll show you guys a couple of plays in which the raiders don't do that uh, but in this play watch watch colton man he doesn't block this guy and said he's gonna take an angle at this linebacker and he's gonna cut him off colton miller is notoriously known for these backside cuts look at that block right there by colton man that's how you stop a guy ideally he needs to stay on that block just a little bit longer uh, but he does a pretty nice job uh getting up there um, an improvement I would like to see is I need you to stick on that block, but not a horrible block. He at least is able to get there and he stops this guy before this guy's able to shut the play down. Uh, if there's any two guys that can shut this play down, it's the guy here and Colt Miller's guy, right? That, that's a hard block for any tackle to make. Uh, just look at where he's lined up. He's lined up to the inside. So Colton has to take that hard step to the inside and then he has to, to climb up the ladder and get up there and, and stop him. Ultimately, you have to block it a little bit longer. Not bad. Let's get into the next play. All right, guys, I want to jump into this play. Here was a play that I actually saw on social media. Uh, someone tagged me on this play and said, hey, uh, look at Andre here. He's trash. He can't block. He's not doing his job. Uh, you guys saw that last play. You guys saw when there was a guy lined up over Andre James. What ended up happening was John Simpson took that guy on. In this play specifically, this is the opposite guard needs to take this guy on, right? You got number uh, 72 here, Patrick Elmnor. He has to be able to take on Big Jelly. Uh, and Andre James has to be able to pass it off correctly. And you guys are going to see that Big Jelly blows this play up. 71 gets in there and blows the play up. Now, uh, I'm going to show this to you guys a couple of times. You guys tell me who, who should have been his responsibility. And I don't know if that's number 72. It actually could be Denzel Good. Uh, but whose responsibility is this? Uh, it, and it is Denzel Good, and do keep in mind, Good is coming back into the game. He has a torn ACL at the moment, which is mind-boggling that he even stayed in the game. 
Um, but he should have taken 71 on uh, Big Jelly, in my opinion. Uh, you guys are going to see uh, Andre gets his hands on, on Jelly. And Good should have taken this on. And uh, as you guys can see, you know, there's, there's some sort of miscommunication here. At the same time, uh, you also see 40 and 6 basically in the gaps here. So I, I don't know if, if it should have been Andre that should have stuck with Big Jelly. Uh, you can see Good kind of gets off of Big Jelly and gets to number 6. At the same time, James thought that Denzel Good would take on Jelly. And he kind of allows Jelly to have that backside gap. So again, I think this is some miscommunication. Uh, this could be some issues with the, um, with the zone scheme specifically. And it actually looks like the Ravens kind of drew this up this way. Um, notice how Patrick Queen is going to really take that backside gap. And, and what this does is this makes them look good, not take Jelly. And it makes him get off a of Jelly and basically take on Queen. Either way, it's interesting. Uh, very good play from the Ravens defensive perspective. Again, this play did not hit the same way the first one did. Um one of the things I also noticed on this play was uh, Leatherwood gets out of his stance super quickly. Now, he's going to be backside blocking Calais Campbell, so he's going to quickly get to the inside. Um, and from the jump, he does a great job. I mean, look at how quickly he's out of his stance. Like, look at that, man. He fires out of his stance. Very impressive, man, if you guys ask me, for Alex Leatherwood to get out of his stance. Watch this again. Watch, boom, he's out of there. Now, he does a good job initially, but Calais will eventually shed the block. As you guys see, he kind of throws Leatherwood there, uh, which it wouldn't have mattered if Calais threw Leatherwood like that, you know, where Calais takes the backside gap. Because this is a zone to the opposite side, it actually would not have mattered. Uh, Leatherwood does his job. Um Everyone else kind of does a pretty good job. Um, there's not a, a ton of space. Ultimately, I, I think the running back would have cut this back if Jelly was blocked. And, you know, we, we do this all the time where we get like two, three, four yards on these plays. But I want to show you guys more plays, offensive linemen specifically. So let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so I want to jump forward into this next play. I'm not sure exactly what happens, but... You know, again, I don't know how the running back runs this right into the back of Andre James. Um, again, this is Canyon Drake. Canyon Drake's not as good of a runner, in my opinion, as Josh. Um, but you guys tell me, man, does, doesn't does there look like there's some sort of lane to the outside here? Because um, he runs right into basically uh, Justin Ellis pushing Andre James. And then he's going to run right into the backside guy. I almost feel like he cuts this too far to the inside or he, or he hits this too far to the inside and you guys can watch it from the back side like this looks so much better from the back side i want you guys to watch this and watch the angles that you're gonna see from these guys first and foremost leatherwood and good do a great job on campbell and then uh you're gonna see fullback do a great job on queen and you're gonna see maro take on 54 i'm not sure what the running back does here man like look at this there's some there's some gaps man watch this right here um, and, and maybe he wanted to hit this, but this wasn't going to go anywhere w with James being pushed back. Um, but look, you got two guys sealing this off and watch, watch, um, Alec Ingold's block on Patrick Queen, uh, right here. Boom. He gets low. He gets there. I don't know why the running back would not have hit this to the outside. Again, I'm not sure what his gap was. I'm not sure what he saw. I'm not sure if he was trying to uh, cut it back to the inside sooner than he needed to. Either way, this is a terrible job by the running back. And this is why we need Josh Healthy, man. There's a lane here based off of the way Alec Ingold block. Obviously, once the running back gets to the outside, he'd have to read Foster Moreau and kind of what 54 does. Um, but you guys can see, man, like there's a lane right here. There will be a lane to the outside as well. And he, he kind of cuts it back too short. And the backside guy blows this play up. Again, I'm not sure what happens there. It wasn't great blocking from Andre James, um, but that's okay, right? On the stretch plays, uh, part of what's going to open up these lanes is the the fact that the center is going to make these reach blocks. This is not an easy block. If this was a power play, Denzel Good would block down, right? And then Denzel Good would then get up to, to number six. But this isn't power. This is zone. So Good's not going to block down. Instead, he's going to block out. And which may, means James has to block out, but he needs to really be able to get his head to the left side of Jelly. He doesn't. He gets pushed back, but that's okay. That's part of the zone, right, is the center will get pushed back a little bit. Again, I'm not 100% sure what happens here. He kind of cuts it back too early, in my opinion. 
Either way, this was another field running attempt. There's some positive runs, there's some failed runs. So let's go ahead and just go through the tape and find some more plays, some teachable moments for these young offensive linemen. All right, you guys, the Raiders are in a situation where they got to get a first down. Um, they're in a situation where they need to score points. They're down 14-0. to zero. Pass blocking situation. I think the Raiders O-line does a pretty decent job. Uh, I mean, considering the fact that the Baltimore Ravens are coming with the blitz, uh, the way they're kind of lined up is kind of weird too. Uh, you got these three guys basically lined up over here. Um, which means that the Raiders running back and tight end will have to be responsible for these two guys. Um, of course, that's unless Foster Moreau runs a route. If Foster runs a route and 54 and 36 both come, then Foster's the hot read. But overall, everyone does a pretty decent job. Andre's going to do a good job. Uh, good does a good enough job. Again, he has a torn ACL. The uh, left guard, left tackle do a pretty good job as well. Overall, man, this is a pretty decent job. Like, Carr has time, and at the end of this, he also completes the pass, right? Like, Waller catches it, man, uh, but it starts up front. If the O-line can't block for Carr, we're not going to have success. Uh, the thing that I like about this play is watch how Colton Miller and John Simpson are, are understanding they're, they're sliding to the, to the right, um, but watch how Colton Miller is going to initially line up to block number 99 and then he quickly jumps to 40 who ends up coming right so they're going to double 99 and then 40 kind of comes i think he's a little late but Colton sees it and boom he gets off of him and he picks 40 up man i think number 40 is also like a fullback for the ravens don't quote me on that but i i feel like he, he might be um or maybe that's one of their defensive tackles either way this was a great job by the offensive line they all did a great job um Great job, man. Great, great job. Let's go ahead and get into more plays. All right, you guys, second and six. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I love Andre James, man. Uh, he's always kind of brought this nastiness, this this willingness to want to put people down. And he doesn't do it all the time. But uh, the Raiders O-line, man, uh, between James and Simpson, these guys put players down, man. They, they have this physicality trait in them, man. Watch 68. Not be scared. He's going to put, I believe that's Brandon Williams, down and again this is a it's a double team um but this is something i used to see with like gabe and, and richie incognito right like one guy stands a guy up and then the other one comes and boom he puts him down oh you guys can watch it boom right there and he, they put this guy down that's what i want to see man i want to see the raiders be physical just wanted to show that to you guys really quickly let's go ahead and jump forward and get into a couple more plays all right, you guys, this is the fourth and one play. Andre James lines up over Clayus Campbell. Uh, this is that play that Campbell blows up. Uh, you know, it's interesting because I didn't really think about it, but uh, the Raiders also stopped them once on fourth and one as they stopped us once on fourth and one. So this is very, very interesting um, because, you know, this, this drive could have led to points it, had we been able to score. And, you know, it would have just been another situation in which the Raiders maybe score a little bit more points. But uh, it's very clear from the beginning, man. Clayus Campbell just swims right over Andre James. Um, and I'm not surprised that this is what happened. I, I think this is a huge mistake on the Raiders. And first and foremost, I think it's an issue. If you're going to run the ball, I think running out of uh, the shotgun is the wrong way to do it. Um, at the same time, the Ravens understand, man. They know that, okay, what's the easiest way to impact this game? And the answer is right through the middle. Well, which player can you take advantage of? At this point, there's one guy. I mean, if you look at these three guys, uh, number 72 is a veteran. You're not going to really have that advantage over him. Uh, John Simpson started a ton last year, and he's a good football player. So you don't have the advantage over him. But there is one guy between the three who is in his first ever NFL game, and that's Andre James. At the same time, playing center is is harder than than playing guard, right? You got to snap the ball first. You don't get the same type of push that you would. You don't get to fire off the line of scrimmage, right? Instead, you're snapping the ball before you do anything. Uh, and the Ravens just said, "Let's just do this, man. Let's just put Clay's on James." Um, it's not bad from Andre James's perspective. Like he he's in a good spot. The thing is, is Clay's Campbell has a nasty spin move. Or, I'm sorry, a swim move, and and he did this to Alex Leatherwood as well. But even then, like, you know, if if Andre James is getting swam over at this point, if he's able to just keep his hands on Clayus Campbell and just push him up field, um, it, it's not a horrible job. And the thing is, is Josh does uh, he does cut this outside, which is kind of interesting as well. 
um, how why, you know he kind of cuts it to the outside, and then he kind of tries coming in. He almost he almost gets the first, but either way, uh, Andre James has to be able to make these blocks. And the thing is, is against the Sealers, it's not going to be easier, man. Uh, Cameron Hayward, uh, a couple other big boys up front for the the Steelers, they're going to do the same exact thing. They're going to put guys over Andre James, and he has to step up to the challenge. Um, the play calling's one issue, but Andre James losing this block is another. He has to step his game up. Uh, we will lose games if Andre James gets blown up like this. But I want to show you guys some more plays, so let's go ahead and jump forward. For every bad play Andre James had, I, I would argue that he had three or four good plays, uh, including this one, man. He's going to go up against a really good football player. I believe that's Brandon Williams. He just does a good job. Man. He just sticks with him. He doesn't give up much ground. Obviously, it's an incomplete uh, pass, as you guys can see. But again, it's not a bad play from James. At the same time, uh, I got to see more from, from some of our blockers. You know, um, it, it was a ton of time for sure. But at the end of this, Foster Moreau kind of loses. And 54 is not that good. I believe that's uh, Bowser. I think that's, how, that's his name. Um, if that's like, you know, if that's TJ Watt, like Foster Moreau, you better, you better handle him. Right? You have to be able to handle him. Um, at the same time, it's interesting that the Raiders put two guys on 96. Right? They put right guard, right tackle right here. On this one guy, I would ideally like um, once the guard here kind of helps um, 96. I, I would like Leatherwood to, to maybe help a little bit more to the outside. I mean, he he does a pretty nice job. He kind of keeps his head on a swivel there. Um, one guy that kind of impressed me more so than than anyone else uh, was John Simpson, especially in pass protection. John Simpson did a fantastic job, in my opinion. Uh, he was handling people by himself, and his strength really showed, in my opinion. This right here is a good job of that. Um, look at how he uses that arm. He extends out and he kind of just is like in a dominant position. And we had seen this, right? Like the one thing that people were talking about when it came to John Simpson was how much stronger he is. He looks and he's gotten. And it's clear, man. It's clear on tape that John Simpson's another player. One thing that I really appreciate about Colton Miller is how much better he's gotten. Like, he's at the point where he can single block anybody, and he does not lose. Um, great job by Colton Miller, man. The O-line did a good job on this play just in general. Um, but, you know, you got some single blocks, right? Leatherwood's on his guy. Colton's on his guy. Simpson kind of takes his guy as well, although Andre James kind of helps out a little bit. Uh, he kind of makes sure number 92 doesn't come to the inside and probably takes a little shot right there. Um, but it's nice to know that, like, Colt Miller can handle one-on-one -on -one pretty much anybody. Um, and then, you know, Leatherwood had some bad reps. He had some good reps. Um, he'll get better with time. You know, it's, it's clear uh, that he, he's going to be a good football player, right? It's just a matter of, of how long it'll be take for him to develop. Uh, but Colt Miller, man, he had a great game this week. Uh, and I think even PFF ranked him as, like, the fourth or fifth highest offensive tackle when it came to pass blocking. Uh, he didn't give up any sacks. He didn't give up many pressures. I think he gave up one pressure. Uh, but he did a pretty decent job the entirety of this game. Alrighty, guys. Uh, jumping forward into this final play. Uh, in my opinion, this was the block of the game by Andre James. He had his fair share of struggles, but he also made the most important block when it mattered. If you guys watch this play, he's going to basically perfect block, man. I, I mean, it does not get better than that. Um, let me go ahead and just bag it up for you guys so you guys can see it again. Uh, basically, he's going to block out. He's going to push 92 outwards. He's going to get 92 running to the side. He's going to get 92 out of the lane. And then he's going to go up after he pushes 92 to number six, Patrick Queen. Watch Andre James. If you blink, you'll miss it. Great job getting out, pushing 92, getting up to number six, and sealing it off for Josh Jacobs. This is why the zone run is so hard to stop if you leave a center unblocked he can do so many different things and in this play specifically they're in a nickel uh, front which basically is going to allow uh, Andre james to to be free and that's one thing that i noticed with james is when he's when he has a guy over him it's a little bit harder when he's unblocked when there's no one over him he does a much better job when Andre james is running to the second level and he's getting up to those linebackers he looks so much better, and this is an example of that. Look at how he pushes 92 out, keeps his head on a swivel, quickly turns to number six, and, and then he just, boom, he just pushes six out of the gap. Josh reads it, and this is a touchdown. 
Andre James did a great job, but it wasn't just Andre James. And you you look at some of these other guys, uh, for example, John Simpson, watch him cut off number 98. At the same time, Colt Miller cuts off his guy. Now, Colt Miller, I don't know if he slips or if he falls. I think he, he uh, kind of hits Simpson, but he gets lucky as well. Uh, he does trip. He, he hits Simpson's legs, but he gets to the inside of 49. If you're going to fall over, fall over to the inside. And that's exactly where Colton falls. And that's perfect because now you've created a, a natural cutback lane for Josh. Great play. If the Raiders want to beat the Steelers. The O-line has to continue to make plays like this. In my overall opinion, the Raiders offense line was not great, but it was not terrible. They did some things right. And if they keep building on that, if they keep doing those things, they're only going to get better. They're young. They're cheap, right, compared to last year and the years in the past. They're going to get better. I have faith. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.